Thank you everyone for stopping by and joining us. Uh, this, let me know if you can't hear me. Um, my name is Carla Santiago and I am co-lead for the LA City Club for the Alumni Society. Um, Giovanni Jerez, Gi Giovanni, I'd love for you to say hi to everyone. Giovanni um, just did the last uh, talk. Giovanni, you wanna say hi and give a little recap of, of our last conversation? Hey everybody, uh, great to see you guys again. I'm excited about this. The first one was around recruiters and what, how they think about recruiting people. We still have that recording. So if you wanna look at it, like a, We'll make sure that we share it with you. But um, but yeah, uh, here to be supportive, you guys. Thank you, Giovanni. So I'm going to be leading the idea of this. Um, this talk is really to be interactive. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about myself and some of the ways I believe community driven networking can aid anyone. Um, and I want to open this up by saying this is not just for job seekers. This is also for entrepreneurs, right? So anyone who's seeking opportunity, even if you have a job right now, whether you're in sales or honestly, if you're a human, you need to know these, these, the, these tips and tricks um, to connect with people. And so without further ado, I'm going to um share the first slide which is rethinking networking and build and build community right let's all start to rethink networking and build rebuild community a little bit about me hate to catfish you with that photo with that amazing bob that i had um i'm carla viones santiago i i call myself a community architect for the last over the last 20 years i have worked with major um fortune 500 companies creating communities, whether it's through market research, entertainment, um, brands, working with them, connecting them to talent, um, brands like Disney, Toyota, Instacart, Airbnb. I also have had the honor of working with this company called Equal, where we pioneered influencer marketing um, back in the day. And um, with that, that opened up my door, the doors for me to have a career within entertainment. And not only do I have experience within digital, but I also have experience with live events, thanks to Netflix. And I also have experience um, within uh, traditional TV and film. So that's a little bit about me. If anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. Again, I don't want this to be just me talking. I want to make this as interactive as possible. But um, the reason I found I, I put this slide up is because I think it's important for you to understand um, my background in regards to how I can um, my experience and how it's helpful, right? And like where it's taken me. Um, and I want to start with 85% of job leads come through networking. A lot of people don't realize that, but I mean, I want to see a show of hands. How many of you, your current role or your last role came through a friend or someone you know? Uh-huh. Edwin. All right. Great. Anyone else? Okay, Valeria. So it's really, it's it's who you know. And I feel like when you're younger in your career, sure, submitting your resume. I remember um, Monster. Anyone else remember Monster submitting their resume on Monster? Um, those days are, are long and gone. And even younger uh, demographic really needs to start um, finding internships and opportunities through networking with folks within their community. Okay, so today the goal is to create transformative points of connection through intentional community-driven networking and strategic partnerships for your life. And the reason I say life, it's because your career is not um, separate from your life. You spend most of your time at work. A lot of us, whether it's good or, or not, your job is part of your identity. 
right? And so to say that creating community is important for your, your career, it's not just simply your career, it's all of you, right? And so the way I approach community and building community is to take the whole self and, ident and bring your whole self forward, right? This is truly about relationships, it's about building relationships and maintaining relationships. And sometimes we take on this uh, idea that your professional self is separate from your personal self. And to a certain extent it is, but really for your success to be, to grow, for you to, to be successful, you have to merge the two. And you have to bring in your personal with your professional. And that can also oftentimes be very difficult, especially for people of color, because there is a persona that you are in your in the corporate setting that is sometimes doesn't match the persona that you are outside of that setting. And so I am very aware that this is a lot more complicated for people like us, um, this group being majority Latino. Um, but at the same time, that could be our power, right? And so like, how do we start building bridges within our own Latino network so that we can support each other? So when you need a lead or you need to grow your business or you need a new opportunity, you have those people within your network. Okay, so I just want to open up the floor. Okay, Edwin, do you mind if I ask you a question? You have your hand up. Sorry, it was, uh, it was a mistake. But yeah, oh, you can ask me a question if you want to. Yes. I'm free. I'm open. Okay. Cool. Is uh your you um your re your current role was it through a friend or someone? Yeah, with yeah. When when I um when I left my for my, my previous job to that, um I started uh, reaching out to my first level network, and then this was a friend of a friend, but that also happened to know me, and that's how I got connected. Amazing, amazing. Um, and what do you do right now? What is your role? Uh, I'm the vice president of technology for for um, a large uh, printing company. I love that. Love that. Um, and in your current role, what are some of the, and sorry to just like hyper focus on you, what are some of the needs? Like how do you grow grow within your role? What are the relationships that you need? So if I wanted to grow into my job, which honestly, not sure I want to because of the type of company that it is, but if I wanted to, it would be absolutely making strong connections to the business leaders, right? And the finding a champion within the C-suite or at least one level down that are going to help me promote my name and speak on my behalf when I'm not in the room. Beautiful. That That's a good point. So a lot about building community is uh, building relationships with people that you might not be transacting with. So I'm, I have a, a slide later on that shows, in fact, actually, I'm just gonna go to it right now real quickly. Um, you're at the center. Building community is having friends, having investors, mentors, partners, fans, amplifiers, collaborators, customers, right? It's not just uh, co-workers. And sometimes people get stuck at a job and enroll and they only focus on those who are within, you know, that work along with them, right? And then there's people who are in sales who kind of understand more that you have to build outside in order to, to grow within your role within your company. But that said, you know, what I want to do with today is not just focus on how you can grow within your company, but your life outside of that company. So going back to you, Edwin, like what are some of the things that you're interested in that are not necessarily within your role? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, Carla? What are some of the things that you're interested in doing that are not necessarily within your role, your current role? Um, I would like to uh, be more um, customer facing, for instance, right? Okay. Um, be closer to, um, to some of the decision making, right? that today in my role, I don't really have, uh, at least not on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really have access to. Okay, so as we're listening to Edwin, we're all learning about who he is, what his current offering is, what he's interested in, and see everyone on this call is listening to you, Edwin, and they're starting to think about how you can fit within things within their life, right? So, okay, so Edwin is seeking an opportunity that's more client-facing. So. 
maybe I'm hiring someone who I in in a role that requires someone to be more client uh client facing. So I would love to get to know you more and see if you're a right fit. It's it's sharing all parts of you, right? Um, okay, so going back to this slide real quick, you're at the center. Building community is not about just having coworkers. It's not just about having people you transact with, like customers. It's about amplifiers. And you said something really important, Edwin. Sometimes you want people to talk about you in rooms that you're not in. And that's why you have to have in relationships with people who are amplifiers. And then you also need friends. You need people to be like, you know what? You should go do an extension course. You should think about fixing this or that. And that's something that you can only get from a friend. A friend, a true friend will always tell you, um, a good true friend will always tell you where are those areas of need that you need to work on that do affect the way you show up in, in a professional setting, right? You need investors, people who want to invest either time or money in you or believe in you. Not, some of you are in corporate America, but you might want to start your own business. You need investors. And that's not something that you should tackle the moment that you decide that you want to create a new business. That's something that you should be doing along the way. You need collaborators. Collaborators are people who have similar interests as you, right? And you can work together, whether that is a in like collaborators and partners can be very similar. It could be someone that you're working on something together for work. So let's say um, I love doing uh, marketing collabs, right? So it's like both parties don't have to pay, but if they work together, they get access to each other's audiences. Little collaborations like that that help a business grow, help you grow your network. You need mentors, right? You need people who have who are in roles that you're interested in that can tell you how to get there, how to get to that point. And you need fans, right? And fans are, you know, people who just champion everything that you do and, and believe in you. And that could be your parents, that could be your family. It doesn't, you know, sometimes when we think about networking, we, we again, we silo ourselves to just what happens in the professional setting. And we don't think about all the people around us who are there to amplify what we want to do and what we want to accomplish in this life. So I'm going to go back. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Because again, I don't want to just be me talking. Anyone have any questions? Comments? I literally only see myself. So Nada? All right. Harness the power of community for your life. Building community, learn to build community by curating moments of connection that are intentional and make people feel seen by showing up consistently, providing space and continued communication. Oftentimes we leave networking to an event or when um, something Giovanni said once that I just find so fascinating and absolutely true when, oh, you lost a job, so now you're 911 networking and you're hitting up people and saying, hey, how's it going? And you haven't reached out to that person maybe in years. This happens to me a lot where I hear from people and I'm like, oh, I haven't heard from you in years. And now you're hitting me up. It it comes off as disingen like disingenuine and desperate. And guess what? I've done it too. We all have done it. And I think it's when you start looking at building community and building relationships while you're in different roles and not just limiting it, limiting yourself to only reaching out when you're in a place of desperation, you won't even get to a place of desperation if you have community, if you're still, if you're constantly building your relationships and maintaining those relationships. And one of those ways that, um, and, and by the way, it doesn't mean you're going to go on a networking spree and go to events and give out your phone number. Not at all. It's finding people that already exist within your network. Like I said, friends and family, people that you find interesting. Maybe it's a new intern that is curious to learn. Take them out to a lunch. Have a coffee. Build relationships. Um, prioritize a connection. Build trust and emotional investment. Focusing on long-term benefits. 
one of my favorite authors is Bell Hooks. And one of the things that she talks about relationships is how oftentimes in the West, we differentiate all relationships. So like your, your marriage, your, your, your living partners over here, your friendships are over there and you treat them differently. And the reality is that you shouldn't treat any relationship differently. You should, yes, there's certain relationships that require more priority. Like my children will always have my priority, but the same level of respect that I give my children, I should be able to give to everyone around me. The same priority may not exist because of the of the dynamic of time, but the respect should always be there. Reciprocity should always be there. So if I choose to build a relationship with you, I that's something that I want to invest in by giving, but also taking. And then with that, I wanna um, create a parentheses because there's two types of people. And with Latinos, and when, and it's very gendered and very race-driven, there's the people that ask and there's the people that take. A show of hands, who is someone who does not like asking for help? Anyone? Y'all are really quiet. Okay. All right. I uh, can I pick on Christina. Why is it hard for you to ask for help? Because I feel like I'm being a burden or like people everybody is super busy and everybody has things that they need. So why are they necessarily going to like create space or time to help me? I think it, it just feels like from a cultural standpoint I think too that's something that kind of gets ingrained in us don't ask for anything like just always be the one to like kind of figure it out this is something that's actually unique to people of color and more so for women than men we're taught to give and not to take and not to be a burden thank you christina for sharing and in building community it does require for you to be vulnerable and being vulnerable also means asking for help. But like anything in life, there should be balance. And so as you build relationships, you have to learn to say, I need help. And you also have to learn to say, I want to give you help, right? You always have to keep yourself in check and say, "Am I? is there reciprocity in this relationship? <clears throat> and one of the things I've learned, um, I remember at Harvard, Jack Reardon was the head of, um, ad he oversaw admissions for the undergrad. And he told me, people don't realize, um, they often were like intimidated by him and, and never really reached out to talk to him. But he would tell me, people don't realize the joy I get when people um, want to learn something that I know. And that's something that for all of us who have trouble asking for help, you have to remember there are people, um, most people, and that's a little, it has a little to do with your ego, love being asked to help in regards to an area that they're proud of, right? So I love community. I, I've had people ask me out to coffees so I can teach them how to connect with people, how to be strategic and, and find ways like, that's something that I'm proud of that I feel like I'm good at. So I don't mind giving. So when you reach out, right, when you start building community and doing community driven networking, think of people and their talents and say, and realize like, oh, Giovanni's amazing at sales. He's really good. I want to learn about sales. I want to learn about growth. I'm going to ask him, reach out and ask him for, for advice. Right. But on that same note, there's some other nuances when you reach out and ask for help don't also be the person and I'm just going to say this to reach out and ask for help and then be and then expect the person to pay for their lunch you know if there's an age gap yeah sure if you're like you know 18 years old and you're asking me to lunch I most likely will pay but don't ask for someone for help and then put the bill on them and I know this is like a this is like a little tip 
from an from a salesperson to to everyone here looking to build community offer to buy a coffee right in exchange to get some gems from the person also if you keep hitting up somebody and they're not available that's also a sign that they just don't have time and do not take it personal because if you think about yourself you can't make yourself available for everyone so therefore you shouldn't expect that from others but that shouldn't stop you right so make a hit list make a make a list of people who you find interesting and start reaching out to have coffees make yourself relatable build that relationship think of it in a mutual respect and like in the in my third in my second point be vulnerable and be your authentic authentic self sometimes when we do these like one on one coffees sometimes people will show up with this like version of themselves that they assume will really attract other people but the reality is that's not helpful to you and that's not helpful to them right the best thing you can do is show up as yourself save what you're good at and also say what you're not good at and expect to get vulnerable be when you when you're vulnerable expect to get authenticity back when you're authentic expect authenticity back and people can help you right if i am showing up as a fake version of myself i'm going to get fake advice or i'm going to get advice that's not applicable to what's really going on in my life and where the help that i need any questions any comments Yeah, I have a I have a question on a related uh issue. Yes. So in building community and this this idea of reciprocity, uh, I want to ask you about something you haven't talked about. Um so I've served on boards of directors and I've run for office and it's very hard and humbling to ask somebody specifically for money when you're raising and building community that way. And my the way I've always gone about it is I always donate you 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 put out seeds, right? You you donate to everyone's causes because then when it comes time for you to hit people up, there there should be some reciprocity. But you find over the course of many years of doing this stuff that um, sometimes there isn't that reciprocity out there, even though you've been feeding everybody, right? You've been donating here, donating there, donating here, donating there. How do you deal with that when when you when you when it comes to do the ask and you've been giving and giving and giving and giving, and there is very little reciprocity coming from that community that you've thought that you've built or you've had for a while. I love your question because that has been my 2024. And some of my friends that are sprinkled into this chat, they know exactly what I mean. I've been that person. I have held office hours every Friday. I, um, poured and poured and poured um, from an empty cup only to get nothing in return. And what I've learned this year, it's about having discernment. So really, and I, I should have made a slide about this, sit down and think about what is it that you want to accomplish and sit down and think about all the people in your life that can help you with that, right? And then how you can help them in return but also look at where you're pouring into because it goes back to, we talked about the asker. Uh, we talked about people who have a hard time asking, but there's a lot of people who have no problem taking and not giving back. And that's where in my career, what I've been learning is don't help assuming you're going to be able to cash a check later on because most of the times you won't. There are a lot of people who are just ready to take from you. And Sometimes, you know, I think culturally we're taught, you know, if you grew up um, with a Christian faith or just being Latino, you're taught to like give, 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 because um, it will come back to you. And sometimes it doesn't come back to you. But then there comes a moment where you have to discern, use your discernment and say, let me hold back. Because giving money is significant. Giving your time and your strategy and your ideas is significant. So where should I strategically pour this into versus spreading it all over, you know, because you don't know. And I think that's a, a, a that's something I had to learn. I think most people learn that as you start building community, you realize, ooh, you know, maybe you have a coffee with someone, you realize, oh, there's nothing here. Or this person 
is just looking to get something from me. Um, I work in Hollywood. It is very common for me to have a coffee um, and connect with people and then only to realize that they're just thinking about how they can connect to somebody within my network. Um, and it just comes off like, it, you know, I, by now my discernment, my my spidey senses are strong and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be pouring into you. I'm a little bit more woke to it. Uh, anything else you want to ask or add, Adolfo? No, I'm just saying, yeah, you know, I, I, my, I guess my attitude nowadays is, I, it's like you said, you have to be more strategic about where you put your investment in terms of building that relationship. It, um, it's always humbling to ask people for money, um, but at the same time, when you, when, you, when you're trying to build by, by giving, and then you don't get that reciprocity. It, it hurts at a personal level at some point, and it is very difficult. I guess I can't be discouraged about not giving to people's donate uh, to people's causes and stuff like that. But um, but it you know I think there, there has to be at some point some kind of like you said you don't want to, but you have to strategize in terms of and figure out and discern who are the people who will actually you know. Um, be there because that's the whole point of building community, right? I got your medas esquina, yo te doy esquina, right? Yeah. And um, whether it's giving money or like helping somebody through a hard time or or giving advice or whatever, right? But um, but there there are those pitfalls, right? When you're trying to build community, there are times where you will be disappointed, and um, it sometimes it's tough. You you're you're like, wow, wh why am I doing this if if I'm not getting back what what I'm supposed to be getting back, but I guess you just got to keep keep on and and discern and maybe move on in that way. And 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 um, believe people when they tell you who they are. I think sometimes people will show us their red flags, but we're like, I'm gonna still pour into this person, and you're giving and giving, and they've told you from they they've been clear um, that they're not interested, that they're only here to take. And I think um, you see that the older you get, the, the more you realize about that, about certain people. And so it's just, you're, you know, it's just keep going. But, you know, one thing I want to, I want to say, remember in the beginning, I said, these are tools for life, right? Com building community is not just for the professional. I think the professional bleeds into the personal and the personal into the professional. Building community is about building relationships. It's about having friends and and building real friendships. You don't make friends with just about anyone, right? And I think we have to apply. It goes back to what Bell Hooks says. You have to apply the same principles that you apply to a romantic relationship, to a friendship, to a professional partnerships. In fact, I'm, I'm, I believe like with all my heart that some business partnerships are just as important or equal to your marriage because it affects you so much. I've had business partnerships that nearly destroyed my personal life. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So if you take the formula from Bell Hooks, which is apply the same rules to all the relationships in your life, you show up differently and you act differently and you're quick to get rid of people or cut off the relationship with people that are not bringing reciprocity. Anyone else want to chime in, share an experience, a thought? Yeah, um, this is Caesar speaking. I thanks for sharing, Carla. I think I, so. I have a friend who's a super networker, and trying to match his abilities is really difficult. But his approach has always been for every ten, you know, virtual meetings, in person, or networking events probably one of them is worthwhile. And so he, he goes in with like no personal feelings, no agenda, no like um, kind of like, what's the word? Like, I'm not going to be bummed out about the end result. He just kind of goes in with a really optimistic outlook and just walks away with the optimistic outlook. And it's really hard for me to kind of approach it like that because to be honest, after COVID, like networking hasn't been the same for me mentally. Like it's, it's not the same, but to that approach, I think it's very helpful for some people to kind of approach it on a non-personal way and just kind of always 
be authentic, like you mentioned before, but it's always being cognizant that it's not always going to be like a great result after the fact. It's like, you just got to go to the next one. Absolutely. And I think that is one approach. And I'm just going to be honest, like I'm an extrovert. I have no problem or shame talking to anybody, but I'm realistic. And I know that most people aren't like this, aren't like me. And so they're, you're, the way your friend is approaching networking is more of a numbers game. There's also a different way of doing it, right? Um, one of the things that you could do is start having deeper conversations instead of small talk with the people that you already know and see who they can connect you to. So one of the things that I do in my business is that people hire me to create community for them. So whether they're a talent, a person, a brand, or a platform, I build community for them. And the way I do it is I'll set them up on meetings. Oh, you should talk to so-and-so, you should talk to so-and-so. And I'm going to give you an example, and I'm going to keep it as vague as possible. But I have one client, an amazing AI platform called Cinebox. It does sentiment analysis, just like this little green light is reading your face. It reads, it, It'll read whether you like a video or not, whether you like the Zoom or not. Um, it's, an, it, it's a powerful tool. I connected my client to another person who then connected her to another person who's now working on the platform. And the connection just keeps going and going and going, right? And I just did the intro to one person and that person opened the doors to other people who are opening the doors to other opportunities. Sometimes we think that networking is getting as many emails as possible and showing up to so many events and being like, here's my card, here's my card, let's get a call. Some of us don't have the time for that. Start small. Think about what it is that you want. Because that's the other thing. You have to know what you want. You have to know what direction you're going, right? Edwin, you said you want to be client facing. So ask a friend within your network, hey, you know what? I've just been thinking about my career lately and I feel like I want to be client facing. And these are the type of roles. That friend might know somebody. Do not limit yourself. I think sometimes we have a thing in our head where we're like, well, that person is not in entertainment, so I'm not going to talk to them. Or so-and-so is just my accountant or so -and -so. you don't know who people know. And when you automatically show up with those guardrails, you limit your own potential. Start with those people that you know and say, hey, you know, this is something that I'm interested in doing. And again, going back, you're being authentic. You're saying, this is what I want. And you're sharing with a friend and let that friend connect you to somebody else. And then it just keeps going. Any other questions? Carla, there's one in the chat from Ooh, Fabiola. Okay. Can, you, can you read it to me? Because I think if yeah. I read the chat, that it, uh -huh. go ahead. Uh, continuing with reciprocity on the other end, how can you reach out to people you are interested in learning from and building a long-term beneficial relationship with when you don't quite yet have something substantial to offer or give in return? That's fine. I, I'm a firm believer that you always have something to offer. Um, I think... The first offering, and I know this is, how do I say this, is a compliment, right? If I know that Christina, who who just read, who was lovely enough to read the comment from the chat, um, Christina has worked at CAA, she's worked at Netflix, she has been a force in getting a lot of Black and Brown um, students in entertainment, and she has placed people all over this industry. I might not have anything to offer her, but I can be like, wow, Christina, I'm really impressed with the work that you have done. I'm curious. I would love to take you out to a coffee and learn more about what you're doing. You don't know everything about anyone, uh, about everyone to begin with. So it might be in conversation with Christina that I might find out, oh, she's going to go on a trip to Jamaica. I know a good restaurant. It, like, don't limit yourself. It's not like you're going to show up and do a 65 page dissertation paper for somebody. It's not that type of reciprocity. There's so many ways that you can reciprocate the energy that someone gives you. 
right? It could be buying them a coffee. It could just be listening. It could be giving them a compliment and learning from them. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, you know, I'm a C-level executive, you're C-level executive. Okay, now we can exchange. No, because in many cases, you won't have anything to offer in, in that sense. But there are other things that you can offer. And again, if you look at this through the lens of building relationships and friendships, you're not sitting there thinking, I have nothing to trade. It, When you look at it from the lens of friendship, it opens it up to a whole world of possibilities where I might connect with, I'll give you an example, a friend of mine that I that is a friend now, but when we initially met, he was... Um, the chief architect at Microsoft with Bill Gates, right? And what the, f excuse my language, what the fuck do I have to offer the chief architect at Microsoft? Like this man has done, and he created, um, you know, how Word connects with Excel. Like he did all those things. I, I, what, he worked with Steve Jobs prior to that. What do I have to connect with this human being? Like I am like at that time, I had just been like, you know, working on influencer campaigns, right? Um, we connected over karaoke. And to this day, we have now like a 17 year, no, 14 year relationship that's going on strong, built off karaoke. It doesn't necessarily have to be business to business. It can't, it doesn't necessarily have to be apples to apples. Everyone has something to offer. Everyone has something to offer. Anyone else? Any other questions in the chat? Yeah, I just want to just echo um, the the spirit of what you're sharing, right? So a, a lot of it is, you know, the the only lining, you know, part of the only lining sentiment here is it's clarity, right? Bringing clarity to the table, um, and and also a, a unapologetic honesty, right? So even just starting a conversation like that hey as a stand right now i really don't think i have anything to offer you but i am so intrigued by what you do and i think i would really like to learn more and this is why i want to learn more can i carve can i invite you out for a coffee can i treat you can we break bread it will let me treat you to that to lunch or to dinner right and i think i think starting with that level of clarity as to where you are and what you want um, and then put it out on the table and apologetically I think that that like you said right it, it opens it opens doors the the other thing I, I would add to this conversation is that you know we, we really are talking about an ethos right a, a, a set of values that that we should all embrace not only as professionals, but also as, as individuals. Right. And, and, um, and, you know, I, I, I could hear, I could hear the pain of the gentleman that spoke earlier about him giving, but not seeing the reciprocity back. I, I could hear that. And I, I, I've experienced that myself, but, but frankly, I, I, I now the way that I've shifted now is to like, you know what, I'm, one, let me recognize that I do not have unlimited time. I do not have a limited emotional and physical energy and that I have priorities, right? Like, you know, like Carla, I got kids. Those are my priority, right? Big, big priority in my life. Um, but I, I would I would say in, in, in whatever is left, right, of my time, my energy, my emotional, spiritual, physical energy, you know, be very intentional. Right. Be very intentional about it. And when you give, give kind of like without really expecting that you're going to get it back. Uh, but for whatever reason, when I do implement that ethos in my life, it I end up benefiting one way or the other, you know, as some don't at some point down that journey. So don't be discouraged. Continue to give. Don't get tired of giving. Don't get tired of being kind. Don't get tired of sharing your time, talent, and and resources with others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, I'm going to, I just noticed the time and I'm going to say this really quickly because I really do want everyone to connect. Um, as far as like at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do, build community, 
the conversation here, it's about opportunities and jobs, right? Nothing is more powerful than word of mouth. It's the most potent marketing force, okay? It can, it, it will push your reputation. So going back to what Giovanni said and what everyone has been sharing, showing up authentically, being very intentional and having meaningful conversations with people and being authentic and letting them know who you are and what you wanna do, that will spread a word about you. You have to do your own PR. You have to. And so when you're having a coffee with someone, Brandon, you want to want to share something? Or was that a mistake? <laughs> no, not a mistake. Trying to unmute myself. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to, uh, with regards to the networking aspect of things, I think, at least with the, with the college students and the folks, the younger folks that I mentor a lot, I always tell them the best way to be memorable because a lot of times in networking, especially if it's something that's designated for networking, like a lot of people go and network and they automatically, hi, I'm so-and-so, this is what I'm looking for, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay. And so in a sea of people asking for things, it's always great to introduce yourself to someone and just get to know them without asking for anything. And at the end of the day, offering to be of service. And then just saying like, if there's anything I could ever do for you, I'd love to, you know, I'm here. And then that's an easier way of getting someone's contact information, phone number, email. And then you're memorable because they're like, what the hell? Even if it's someone that's older than you or more advanced in their career, because it's not just about career, right? Maybe they need help with their personal life or maybe it's a guy and you're a girl and maybe he's having all of a sudden some relationship problems and he remembers and he's like, oh, maybe she can give me some insight or whatever it may be. But I always tell the people I mentor like, Never leave the conversation asking for something. Leave the conversation offering to help if they ever do. I love that. And, and basically what you're doing is just building relationships, friendships. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and, that, and you become memorable in a sea of everyone asking for something. Exactly. Okay. I love that. And what I want to do real quickly is have everyone go on a, on a breakout session. And if you look at the questions that I put together, put together, you notice how they're not like, what do you do for a living? What's your title? It's, they're all personal because it's most important to connect at a personal level with people and then see, maybe there is something that you can transact with. Maybe there's something you can collaborate with. Maybe there's an opportunity for mentorship. Maybe there's an opportunity for just being friends, right? At the end of the day, building community is building relationships. And it's through these relationships that your success will come from where it, it, it and it's showing up authentically. It's also showing up consistently, not every four years when you need a new job, you're hitting up people asking them, Hey, you know, I'm looking to do this. No, maintain those relationships. And by the way, for those of us who are parents or just don't have the time, it could be sending someone a funny meme, you know, to keep, to maintain the relationship. It could be, Hey, I, I saw this article and I thought of you. you. No one has time to constantly be going out to co coffees and lunches and whatnot. But there are easy ways to maintain a relationship that doesn't take a lot from you, but it lets the other person know, I'm thinking about you and I appreciate the times that we have exchanged. So without further ado, I would love everyone to, we're going to be going into breakouts. And um, these are the questions. Uh, how, okay. If everyone could just remember them, I, I'll see if we can put them in the chats. And just when you're in a breakout session, answer one of these questions. If you had a warning label, what would it be? How do you get rid of stress? And then given the choice of anyone in the world, who would you want to go to dinner? Who who, who would you want to be your dinner guest? So um, Christina, if we can break everyone into breakout in, into small groups and go from there. I hope that um, whoever, I know some of you just have one name, like Fabiola and Caesar. Um, so you're very mysterious. No one knows anything about you. Um, but grab people's names, hit them up on LinkedIn. Don't be shy. Um, I'm looking at a lot of you and I'm like, oh, already my mind is thinking you would be great to talk to so-and-so. And there's a lot of connectivity and opportunities here. Um, shout out to Giovanni, who's an expert at building connections. Also to Christina Hatcher for reading the comments. Christina is an amazing human being. Like I said, she just shared her LinkedIn. She has a powerful resume, but not only that, she, um, a lot of her role is br building, bridging the gap between 
entertainment roles and our communities. So please reach out if you have a role at your company or if you're interested, Brandon, I really think you should connect with Christina. Those of you who don't know Brandon, he's a talent manager in Hollywood. He has some really big names that he works with and he's worked on some amazing films. Oh yeah, Carla, those are great questions. I really enjoy them uh, as a good, um, just a good way to facilitate meaningful, you know, go going beyond the first layer, right? The superficial layer. So. I, but it, it really it really made me wonder, right? Like, okay, wow, I should have an arsenal of questions like this. Like, what what's that playbook? You know, what's like maybe maybe oh. we have a Slack channel with a forum where we where we start sharing, you know, thoughtful questions like that. I have I've got it for you. And I'm trying to if you guys look up like you cards, L-I-K-E-U cards. It was created by a fellow CAA um colleague of mine, Kiara Williams. Um, they're really great for building conversation. And what one of the things is that those cards do, they build intimacy. Um, and it's based off, has anyone here heard about the 36 questions to fall in love? No. There was, there we go. There was a professor who took 300 random strangers, random strangers, paired them up and had them ask each other 36 questions. You can look up the New York Times article, 36 questions to fall in love. And they're just, and, and those, those questions, by the way, are some of the questions that they, they make you ask. And they're just very innocuous questions. Like, how would you spend your day? How were you raised? Things like that. It actually builds intimacy. 85% of the people who were in that 300 person study went into a long-term relationship. 85%. Wow. What that shows you is that when you show up authentically as a human, not as, hi, I'm Carla Santiago, co-founder of, uh, founder of Story, or hi, I work at Netflix. When you show up as yourself and you ask intimate questions, you build relationships. And that's where community, that's the foundation of community. It's not transactional relationships. They're thoughtful, intentional relationships. Oh, I like that. I knew, I, I knew, I knew you had a deck of secrets. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. There, there's my, there, those are my secrets. I gave you it all. <laughs> you know, Thank one, you so one of my favorite questions to ask, it's around music. Um, I find that, you know, I've, obviously as Latinos, we love, we have an extra affinity to music. And um, I find that music have a way of um, transporting us, right. To, to, to memories that are, deep within us that have, that evoke all sorts of other emotional strings. So I always find myself asking people, Hey, when you, when you, when you first bought that first car and I was to turn, if I were to turn your radio, play your CD player, right? Remember that? Remember CD players? <laughs> uh, what, what's the, what's the song that would be playing, right? If I were to buy your car, what, what, what would be that song? And uh, I always get the most interesting responses from that question. Giovanni, you're a smooth operator. <laughs> you already had me like thinking, what song would I pick? Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's 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 doing it's being personal. Oh, yeah, this was fantastic. Thank you for facilitating this. Appreciate well, it. Thank you all for joining. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm always down for coffee and um willing to share all the slides and any information that anyone hey but like. but if but if i invite you to coffee i promise you i will pay for it okay pay for that coffee <laughs> yes yes hello reciprocity <laughs> <laughs> see you guys how are we going everyone